Proclaim with me the Lord's greatness. Let us praise his name together. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me and freed me from all my fears. The oppressed look to him and are glad. They will never be disappointed. The helpless call to him and he answers. He saves them from all their troubles. His angel guards those who honour the Lord and rescues them from danger. Find out for yourself how good the Lord is. Happy are those who find safety with him. Honour the Lord, all his people. Those who obey him have all they need. Even the lions go hungry for lack of food, but those who obey the Lord lack nothing good. From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 to 12, the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus saw the crowds and went up a hill where he sat down. His disciples gathered round him and he began to teach them. Happy are those who know they are spiritually poor. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are those who mourn. God will comfort them. Happy are those who are humble. They will receive what God has promised. Happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. God will satisfy them fully. Happy are those who are merciful to others. God will be merciful to them. Happy are the pure in heart. They will see God. Happy are those who work for peace. God will call them his children. Happy are those who are persecuted because they do what God requires. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are you when people insult you and persecute you and tell all kinds of evil lies against you because you are my followers. Be happy and glad, for a great reward is kept for you in heaven. This is how the prophets who lived before you were persecuted. Amen. have some exciting news uh, for you today. Uh, I want to introduce to you Cameron, or Cam, as he's known. Um, those who will have seen uh, the latest copy of the Church magazine, uh, read the little piece where Cam introduces himself, I wanted to introduce him uh, to you this morning. Uh, Cam is part of the Synod Youth, uh, Youth Work Opportunity Scheme, I think it's called. Um, where the Synod employs uh, a young person for a period of uh, a year uh, initially uh, to do some work within the churches uh, in the area of youth work and ministry. Uh, and we're very pleased that Cam is with us for the next 12 months to, uh, to explore doing some youth work and some ministry here in this church. So it's a good opportunity this morning to introduce him to you um, and to throw him really in at the deep end, to a baptism of fire if you like, um, I've asked him just to share with you a few re reflections on the Bible passage that we've just heard from Matthew on the Beatitudes. So, uh, Cam, do you want to come up? Um, and I'm going to let you uh, uh, reflect on the passages that we've just heard uh, and get to know the congregation. Um, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit more afterwards about the youth work that's going to be happening. Thank you. Good morning. Um, thank you for having me. That's uh, really appreciate that. Um, so, before I go into reflection, I'll just give you a quick introduction about me. My name's Cam, I'm 17. Um, as you can tell, I'm not from the north. I'm originally from Birmingham. Um, I've only been a Christian for five or six years, so relatively new, which is um, kind of interesting and unusual, apparently. Um, so, what do we get from this passage? Well, for me, I think it's all about labels and how we define ourselves. Um, I think that people often put themselves into a bracket or into a certain category of people. Um, so for example, I'm labelled the youth worker. Um, 
And we all have things that maybe in the past, maybe in the present, that we define ourselves by. Things that we may have done, things we may have said, all these, all these opportunities. And we might not be proud of them, and we, we might be proud of them. It depends what that is for you. Um, so just think about that. And I never thought that I would be stood in front of a church, giving a reflection on a passage. It's crazy. And I'm really thankful to God that I can define myself as his child, that we are all defined by God and our actions within that. So, um, sorry. Yeah. So I think that what you need to realize in this passage for me that it's it's not about who you are. It's not. It doesn't matter if you're male, if you're female, if you're young, if you're old, if you're whoever you are, it does not matter. You, you are blessed and you are defined by God and you are defined by your actions. Um, you don't need to be defined by what car you drive, what, what school you went to, what, what church you go to, it does not matter. And I hope that we as a church can define ourselves as a loving church, that we can define ourselves as children of God. And I just want to pray for you, and if you want to pray privately, if you want to accept my prayer, that's awesome. So I'm just going to pray. God, I just pray that people know that they are defined by you and their actions. It does not matter who they are, that they are welcomed into your kingdom. And I just pray for this church that we all here gathered in your name that we know that you care about us and you love us and you are defining us at this very moment that yes our past has happened and our future is yet to come but we are defined right now by you and i just pray for the opportunity to grow and the opportunity that we can get more people to be defined by you that you are in control I just pray that you bless us all, Lord. I pray that whatever happens, that you are in that, and that you are defining that situation, that you are putting your label on that situation. Um, Thank you, Cam. Really hard thing to do just to ask somebody to come in blank and, uh, and cold and just to uh, talk to a congregation. So well done, Cam. Uh, thank you for doing that. Um, Cam and I have obviously had some conversations. We've met together and, and talked about how youth work might look uh, in, in our church and in our community. Uh, and we've had some online conversations with uh, some of the young people around. Uh, we've uh, had some face-to-face uh, uh, -face meetings yesterday. Uh, and we, we're hoping that over the next 12 months we can develop a weekly uh, youth meeting where we can just uh, get the youth together, uh, looking for uh, to, uh, targeting at the age range of about 15 to 18 and, and that kind of area, uh, just to get together uh, and to uh, give them the opportunity to share any problems they've got, to offload, to, to chill out, uh, to spend time just talking, but also a more structured program where we can uh, debate issues that are relevant to them and to see how that feeds into worship and into the community. So uh, what we want to do is to encourage uh, those uh, young people to take their faith out into the community um, and we need to work out how that's going to happen with all the latest restrictions. Um, but um, hopefully we can uh, start something up where we can get the young people together quite regularly on a weekly basis and feed out in, into the community. So we've got a couple of projects we've got planned around Christmas time that we might be able to do um, and hopefully we can get uh, that up and running. So we don't know what the year's going to hold, it's a, a blank slate at the moment but we're pleased to have Sam with us um, and we're pleased that he's uh, going to lead us really in, in, in our youth work uh, over the next 12 months. So uh, let's give Cameron a round of applause. <laughs>
just out the way of Belgium. Um, so uh, let's uh, ask Ken if he'll play for us again uh, our next hymn, uh, which uh, is on your orders of service. Uh, how pleased, how blessed are all the saints, our God. Uh, and again, invite you to follow along by yourself. success in the world is not success in God's eyes, and that the things that we think will bring us happiness are not the things in which God makes us happy. We come to worship on what is All Saints Day, when we remember the heroes of our faith who have been celebrated and venerated for the good things they have done in their lives. And when we listen to the stories of the saints, it's rarely through a life of luxury and leisure that they are brought to sainthood. Often it is through adversity and suffering, and in many cases in dying for their faith, in which they attain this almost divine status within our tradition. When Jesus gives his Sermon on the Mount, he teaches the people what it means to be blessed by God. And again, it's not those living lives of luxury and leisure that are blessed, but those who suffer hardship and adversity in this life. Such people Jesus calls blessed or happy. And we consider today the things which we believe uh, will bring us true happiness. You may have heard the story of the woman walking along the street one night and she came upon an elderly gentleman who had parked some way down the street, but who was walking around under the streetlight and gazing intently at the ground. She inquired as to what he was doing, and he replied that he was looking for his car keys. And she offered to help and started looking with him too. After about 15 minutes of intense searching, she asked, are you sure you dropped them here? And he said, no, I dropped them over there by my car, he replied. Well, why are you looking over here, she asked, trying to hide her sarcasm. Well, because we'd never find them over there. There's no street light over there. 
the readings I think speak to us today about the places we look for happiness. The places that the world shines the light upon, but in which we will never find what it is that we're looking for. In Matthew's Gospel, uh, we read the familiar passage called the Beatitudes, or the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus shines a light here in the places we least expect and reveals God to us in those places. As Christians, we're often criticised for being miserable, for not having fun, for trying to stop others from having fun too. Is religion sad and miserable? Well, maybe. But the kingdom of God is very different. God wants us to be happy. If we live in the kingdom, if we participate in the kingdom, then that's how God wants us to be, to lead a happy life. Blessed means being made happy by God. And Jesus tells us that life in the kingdom should be filled with profound joy and happiness. And no matter what our circumstances might be, it is a joy that no person or no thing can take away. When Jesus teaches his sermon, he's not saying, put up with the misery for now, because in a future life you will be happy. It's not some futuristic joy that Jesus is talking about. It's a happiness that is within our grasp right now. Being blessed, being made happy by God, being filled with joy, are the marks of those who have really surrendered their lives to God and tasted his grace. If we trust our lives to God, then no matter what circumstances we find ourselves in, we will find that we are happy and blessed. So let me ask you this morning, are you a potato or an egg? Because I'm a bit like a potato, whereas those saints that we talk about are more like eggs. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about the hot water that we get ourselves into. I'm talking about those situations when life turns up the heat and makes things just a little bit more uncomfortable. When you place an egg in boiling water, it goes hard. When you place a potato in boiling water, it goes soft and eventually turns to mush. We read the stories of the saints, those heroes who face adversity and suffering and come out with shining halos. Whereas when, whenever I face such things in my life, inevitably I end up feeling like mush. So are you a potato or an egg? When you find yourself in boiling water, when life has turned up the heat when things start to get a little uncomfortable. Are you strengthened and become tougher? Or do you crumble and dissolve? Jesus says, happy are those who are poor in spirit. Through the Old Testament and the Psalms, the poor in spirit is a phrase that refers to those who have been ground down by society and by political circumstances and those whose confidence remains only in God. Everything in life has failed them, and the only thing they have left is to put their trust in God. Jesus says, happy are those who mourn, those who have seen the very depths of the world's suffering, those who have lost others and have lost themselves to sin. They who are wide open for the comfort of God longs to give them. Jesus says that victory does not go to the wise and the powerful, but to those who are small before God. Happy are the meek, because God can afford to exalt them without danger of them getting proud. Jesus shines a light in these areas of our lives and in other areas where we do not, not expect to find happiness. And he says, look, it is in these places you may find God, and in these things that God may make you happy. Then you will be surely blessed. 
One quote on happiness says that happiness is the byproduct of doing good things. Or you might like to say that happiness is a byproduct of being a saint. If we live our lives as God intends, then no matter what happens, we have the opportunity to be happy and blessed by God. Many see the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes as like a Christian manifesto, not a passive statement about the difficult situations in life that we might find ourselves in, not a nice sermon to comfort those who might be suffering in various situations, but a call to be a people who actively participate in the kingdom, who, like the saints, see their lives as an active expression of our love for God, and who, by actively participating in this way, will find happiness. Calling us to be poor in spirit and trust only in God. Calling us to mourn the loss of ourselves to sin. Calling us to be meek so that God can lift us up. Calling us to hunger and strive for righteousness. Calling us to be merciful. <laughs> calling us to be pure in heart, devoted only to God. Calling us to be peacemakers and to suffer persecution for righteousness' sake. The words of the psalm that Ken read for us say, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are those who take refuge in him. For the Lord, you, his holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Let us be saints. Let us live lives which shine with the glory of God. And by, perhaps by doing so, we shall find what we are looking for and find that we are blessed for having done so. Amen. The prayers that I've used today have been taken from the Church of Scotland, uh, produced by Reverend Tom Gordon, and we come to our prayers of intercession as we reflect on the Beatitudes and pray for our community and for ourselves. Let's pray. God of all blessedness, we turn to you now with our prayers for others, seeking your blessing on all for whom we pray. You tell us, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So we pray for those whose spirit fails them, that they might be strengthened in their faith. For those whose poverty is physical, that they might have an equal share in the fruits of your kingdom. For those whose outlook on life is poor, that they might have a glimpse of hope. You tell us, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. So we pray for all who are cast down by grief, from recent losses or a deep-seated sorrow over many years. We pray that they might know the comfort of hope, the comfort of love, the comfort of new life. You tell us, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. So we pray for leaders and followers, for big people and little people, for the proud and the humble, that in acceptance and grace we might work together for the good of all. You tell us, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. So we pray that we, who seek to live in that very righteousness, might indeed be filled with wonder and joy in this very place. You tell us, blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. 
So let us forgive others, that we might know and understand the true meaning of forgiveness. You tell us, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. So make our hearts pure within us, that we might know your love all the more. You tell us, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. So we pray for all who work for peace. Peace in relationships, peace in communities, peace in politics, peace in places of conflict, peace for the body, mind and soul, that all might see themselves and others as God's children and defined by him. You tell us, blessed are those who are persecuted, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So we pray for the broken and despised, the marginalised and the downtrodden, the victims and the dispossessed, the refugees and the homeless. This kingdom, our precious kingdom, belongs also to them. And as we pray for others, we pray also that you will hold us always in communion with the saints of all the ages, those who have been blessed and whose memories, example and closeness bless us even at this present time. We offer our prayer in Jesus' name, who taught us to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Our final hymn this morning may be a new one to many of you. I'm going to ask Ken to play it through for us and again invite you to follow along by yourself. As stars adorn the night veiled sky.
go now with the blessing of the saints and the angels. Go now with the blessing of the people in this place. Go now with the blessing of the whole people of God. Go now with the blessings of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and always.